Hey everybody, welcome back to this old trike. Today we're gonna do the ATC 350X Buyer's Guide, the 12 down and dirty, the dirty dozen facts that you need to know if you're going to look at and buy an ATC 350X. Number one, what level of quality are you looking for? The ATC 350X was made for two years, 1985, 1986. Do you want the 85, do you want the 86? Do you want a garage queen? Do you want a pavement princess? Do you want a, just a nice rider? Do you want something you can stick in a mud hole? Do you want a complete project? And on your answers to those questions, I'll determine whether you want a Minty 86, a Minty 85, a nice rider, perhaps an 85 with 86 fenders, or something that's gonna take you two, three, four, five months, a year more to work on. That's the first thing you gotta ask yourself. Next, step two. You need to look at the general overall appearance, signs of wear and abuse. So in this category, we're looking for general signs of wear. We've got the initial visual inspection. Are there blemishes, flaws, cracks, wear marks? What are those things? Is there abuse? You do the grab bar inspection, where you just run your finger along the grab bar. Has this thing been wheelied down the driveway? Has it been tipped over and put on its side? Feel the ends of the, the bar ends or the brake levers. And just give it a general inspection. Case wear, tire wear, bent objects. Has the engine been painted all the same color so no bolts and nuts and anything show? Has the owner douched it with SC1? Bunch of tricks that Flippers will try, they'll spray it with WD-40, they'll make things look good from the outside. But there's just something about a nice original machine you can just tell. Number three, fenders and seat. 85 had red fenders, 86 had white fenders. Sometimes they get mixed up. Important thing to look for though is are the fenders original OEM? Do they have the embossing? On an 86, 85 won't have that. They'll just have a sticker there. But the telltale sign is the mud flap. Is the mud flap there? If it's all molded in one piece, that is a good indicator that they are aftermarket fenders. There's a lot of good fenders out there, but the biggest value is with OEM. To tell an OEM front fender from an aftermarket fender, but the lines are crisper. They're not as round. Shrouds won't look like an 85. They are patterned They're an 86. They'll look like this, but that's OEM. Your mud flaps missing on OEM fenders at the end of the world? No. It'd be better if it was there, though. They're about 300 bucks to replace. If you've got red Myers on your 85, is it the end of the world? No. It'd be better if they were OEM, in my opinion. If you're missing the decal next to your Kickstarter, is that the end of the world? No. It'd be better if it was there, in my opinion. Seat. This is an OEM seat. There are no seams. There's Honda at the back, ATC on the side, because this is an 86. The letters are level. It's not perfect. See, that came from the factory. That's what you want. You don't want it to have cracks or rips. Those are all takeaways. This is a recovered seat from Tammy at Cosmic Quads. That's the next best thing to OEM. You can see the lines are crisper. The, the foam has harder lines. It's a beautiful seat. This is a recovered seat. I did it myself. It was about $40. It has seams. It doesn't look as good. I'd rather have an OEM, but this is my rider, so that's okay. Do your fenders have sun checking? Are there little faint scratches, cracks, blemishes? Those are all takeaways. Factor that into your decision to buy the machine. Number four, the tank. 350Xs came with metal tanks. They look funny with aftermarket Clark tanks or whatever brand, IMS, there's a few. You should really try to get one with a steel tank that is not banged up, that is not rusted through, because that's the way they were designed. If you don't have a steel tank, is it the end of the world? No, but I'd strive to get one. This tank is beautiful. It's been repainted though. It's missing the decal with the warnings that goes there. Is it the end of the world? No. This is an original 86 tank. It's got some signs of wear. It's not perfect, it's not banged up though. I like it. 85 tank, has some dings, has some dents. It's clean on the inside, 
It's a great tank for a rider, and that's what this is. Couple tricks. Take your finger, run along the seam, see if it's wet. Get down there, look up underneath the tank. Pull the tank off if you've got to. See what the bottom looks like. They should have a heat shield down there. Do not assume it is clean inside. Get in there and look. Is the pet cock leaking? Is it drippy? For me, a metal tank is kind of a big deal. Go look on eBay and see what they're going for. Five, six hundred dollars. It's kind of a big deal. Number five, the engine. You're looking for wear. Indications of use. Case wear from the feet rubbing is common. Is it completely wore off? That shows a lot of use. This doesn't have a lot of use. This doesn't show any use. It's been repainted, but professionally. Pull the dipstick. Check the oil. Is it dirty or is it clean? Does it have good compression? You're not probably going to bring a compression tester, but you can do this. Yep, that's good. Does it have the front sprocket cover? Does it have the case saver? If it doesn't, <clears throat> there might be case damage in there. You might even need to pull this, bring an 8mm, pull this to look in and see if the inside of that case has damage. Start it right up. Does it run good? Does it tick? Is it smoky? Does it sound all right? You can kind of tell. It should run all right. If it ran when it was parked, but it doesn't run now, it's not the end of the world. Check for compression. Check to make sure it turns over. Factor that into the price. If it doesn't run, that's okay. It'd be better if it did. Is the carburetor original? Is the carburetor 400EX upgrade carburetor? That's cool on a rider. Hopefully it's not a clone. Don't worry, that's not a clone. But you don't want a Chinese carburetor. Try to get an OEM carburetor if you can. And of course, if you need it rebuilt, reach out to Curdy Eldridge, 223 Cycles. He's the man. Does your airbox have the lid? Does it have the snorkel tube that's sometimes missing? Does it have an air filter? Is it OEM like this one? Is it uni? Is it missing? Is there sign of mice traffic? Well, there's some poopy. Better get that out. Is the exhaust OEM? Is the header pipe there? Does it have a guard? These are hard to replace. Try to make sure you have it. If it's aftermarket, is it a super trap? Is it an empire? If not, it's probably junky. What are some junky brands? DG, Loud, Cracky, RCM, probably the same thing. Cobra, nah, pretty close to DG. DG made those accelerator exhausts. They're pretty cool, but super trap sort it's at. Number six, the frame. We're looking for cracks, repairs, and bends. E5s are very prone to cracking right through here. This one isn't. That's good. Another 85. It's not cracked either. That's nice. What we should look for is a repair. And there is no repair. No extra weld. They're very prone to cracking right through here, though. That's the worst spot. A lot of times you'll see hairline cracks through here. This one's good, though. No cracks. It's on this 85 either. That's nice. 86. No cracks either. Frame painted a different color. Is it freshly powder coated? Is it rusty? Is this the extent of the rust? That's not bad. That wear isn't bad. But if it's heavily pitted, left outside, rusty on all the nuts and bolts, you might be looking at a project, unless it's gonna be a rider, unless you're gonna stick it in a mud hole, then maybe it doesn't matter. Check your VIN number. If it's an 85, it'll have that F. 85. Look at that. An 86, it'll have a G. 86, look at that. If it's an 87, it'll have an H. But those don't exist. Number seven, tires and rims. OEM 85 tire says Pro Vector from the factory. Replacements were PV. The rim should be an Anki. And this is date coded February of 85. That's what an 85 rim looks like. Pro Vector 101. OEM front tire. 86 front rim looks like this with a cast aluminum ring. It says Japan. PG might be the brand. I don't see a, a date code. 5T17 doesn't really mean anything to me. Front tire is a PV 101. That's OEM. 86 rears look the same. These get a PV 701. They're worn. You've got to ask yourself, do you want OEM tires more than aftermarket? Is this important to you? Maybe it's not. You gotta ask yourself that question. 
These are new old stock, never been ridden on, PV701s. They're not original to the machine, and neither is this rim. This is a TRX rim, you can tell by the thicker bead. Someday I'll fix that. This machine deserves it. This is my rider. I have PV702s off a of 250X or a 300EX on TRX rims. They look similar from a distance. And I like those tires. That's what I use on this rider. Considerations are, are they worn? Is there dry rot? Tubed? You can check by the valve stem. Are the rims all bent and chewed up on the edge? Or are they nice, like they're brand new? Again, those aren't original. OEM tires might not mean anything to you, and that's okay. If it's a rider, you probably don't care. But if you're looking for an OEM original, you're going to want that. Number eight. Bars and controls. Both 85 and 86 OEM bars are black with no crossbar. And they should be able to receive a threaded bar end that takes that 10 millimeter bolt. This is an 85. This is an 85 on off headlight switch. That's what it looks like. It's an 86. They have the red switch with the gray high low and the yellow on off. This is my nice 85. But it's got a new old stock 86 OEM switch. That deserves probably to go on this machine. And we should find something for this machine. Don't you think? Are the bars bent? Sit on it. Do they feel right? Take it for a ride. Does it pull? What's going on? Are the grips worn? Are they nice? You can still buy these new from Honda. It's not a big deal. 11 bucks, 13 bucks. Is the throttle all chewed up? Is it worn? Are these all rusted out? Are the levers broken off? What do the controls look like? Was it treated with love, respect, or is it all beat? I have a lot of ride time on this machine, but still, the grips are pretty good. There's some rust in these. You can still buy these. These are rusty. I should replace them. This has some scratches. Just look at everything. Does the front brake work? No. Ah. No fluid in this one. How about this one? Oh, look, it's got a guard. That's cool. Extra points. Oh, yeah. Nice and firm. Oh, this one, too. I like that. How's the caliper look? Caliper looks good on this 85. It has those flutes. That's nice. Hose is kind of kinked. That's unfortunate, but I like it. That's original. What's the aftermarket reproduction look like? There's a reproduction from Mike Pomgren at Vintage Motorsports. VMS Mike on Instagram. These are awesome. A little over 100 bucks right now, 120 maybe. They look amazing. 86 caliper's got a different design. They changed it so you could pull this off without pulling the front tire. It's not like that on an 85. Talking about brakes, check the back brake. I bet there's no fluid in that. Oh yeah, there's fluid in that one. That's not going anywhere. Caliper looks good. I happen to know if that's a reproduction. Let's see what an OEM one looks like. Very similar. It's probably hard to tell them apart. This looks like it's got a little more sheen to them. Let's go back to that other one. Hmm. Hard to tell. Another thing to ask is, is the parking brake cable connected? This is that whole system. A lot of times you can get a back off plate that goes on here. Now that I think about it, I think that is original. I think I'm thinking of a different 350X that I owned. Sorry about that. Number nine of the Dirty Dozen, the swing arm and rear end. Do the wiggle test. Grab the bars. Wiggle it. I can hear gas, but I don't hear slop in the swing arm pivot bolt or in the axle carrier. That's nice. Or in the hubs, for that matter. Sometimes those wiggle. Had wiggle, it'd be this one. Let's see. Nice and tight. That's what you want. Is the axle straight? It'll be hard to tell if you're pushing. You got to uh, test it by riding it. If it's got a wobble or a pulse or it makes you go like this, it's probably bent. In the factory, they kind of have this yellowy zinc color. That's how it should look if it's nice and very low hour. It's nice riders will look kind of like this. But if it's got a lot of rust on it, it's going to be hard to get that finish back. This thing's been polished and probably clear coated. I know this machine's restored, so that's probably the case. How is the chain and sprockets? 
These are pretty tight. That's a brand new sprocket. What's a worn one look like? That's an aftermarket sprocket that's a little bit smaller than stock. And actually this chain is kind of loose. Needs to be tightened up and lubed. Look at that. A heavily worn sprocket will not have uniform grooves in it. That's not bad. How's the shock? Is it bouncy? Is it firm? That's really firm. Is this one bouncy? Not bad. It can be stiffened up. Is it dirty? Is it rusted? Check for missing nuts and bolts, missing axle bolts, sprocket bolts. Roll the machine, make sure the rotor doesn't wobble. Does it have a swing arm skid plate? Does it have the motor skid plate? All good questions. Forks and the front end. Does it have fork boots? Are they OEM fork boots? These are. Those are. Those are. You can still buy those new from Honda and you should get them. They're a little bit more, but they look so good. Is it a deal breaker if it doesn't have OEM fork boots? No, but it tells you something about the character of the owner. Do the fork lowers feel oily? Like they've been leaking fork oil and they have bad seals? These don't, that's nice. Appear to be bent. Does the machine lean to one side? Does the tire look straight? Everything looks good. Are they set to the right height? These are not. Hmm. There's a line right there. The fork should go above the top triple to that line. Is the triple the right color? That's silver, that's 85. That's black, that's 86. Silver on an 85, okay. If you test drive the machine and it pulls one way or the other, it could be a bent fork. It could also be tire pressure. It could be bent triples, but that's unlikely. Handlebars being bent might make it feel like something's bent, but it could just be the handlebars. Does it have the brake hose guides, top and bottom? Those little things add up. Is it missing these guards down here? Those guides, rather? Those things add up. This one's missing that top guide. Junk. Front Honda badge look like that. Want it to look like that. Reach out to Mike Pomgren. He's got those for you. Number 11. Headlights, taillights, wiring. This is your headlight bezel. Sometimes they'll show damage on the corners if the thing was rolled. They might be smushed. Your lenses could sometimes be cracked. Make sure they're bright and shiny inside because that silver can come off that's inside. Lenses are getting very hard to find, so be careful. Make sure you check. And they should have that rubber gasket around the outside. Hopefully the machine will run and you can turn them on, you can shut them off, you can go high beam, low beam, you want to check everything. You turn the machine on, you turn the lights on, and they pop. And all of a sudden there's no lights. That might mean that you have a bad voltage regulator. In order to test that, you've got to make sure you have good bulbs, and then you turn them on, and if they blow, that means you got a bad voltage regulator. Test the tail light because that's the cheapest bulb on the whole machine. Tail lights. Do you have a lens? Do you have the housing? Is the whole bracket missing? That happens. I'm sure there's a guy repopping the lenses. I don't think they're original from Honda, available from Honda anymore. Just in general, check the wiring. Make sure there's no cuts and splices. Those are all factory. Nothing's missing right here with these two. That's for a tachometer or speedometer. That's fine like that. Just look at the harness. Look for anything that looks funny. And the last item on the dirty dozen for the ATC 350X, we have the toolkit, the manual, paperwork, accessories, and extra. The kind of garbage can of everything else that was left over. Does your machine have the toolkit? The 85 toolkit has this little bump out. Is there anything inside? Ooh, look at that. That's nice. This toolkit looks like that. It's all squared off. Anything inside? Oh yeah, two for two. Aw, oh, swing and a miss. Sometimes in the toolkit, you will find the original owner's manual folded up and put in there. You should take it out and put it somewhere safe. You should always ask for extra paperwork. You should see if it has a title or registration. Those are all very important things. They are worth a lot for future resale. A lot of times people confuse a title with a certificate of origin. They're not the same. 
Everything got a certificate of origin that tells that it came from Japan. Not every state issued a title. Here in New York, we didn't get titles. We got transferable registrations. So know what's important to you. It's not a deal breaker. Is it better if it's there? Yeah. Some accessories include the headlight guard with the removable grill. Headlight guard with the welded in grill. I like those personally. Oh, I have two. That's nice. This is a popular accessory, but I don't believe it's Honda line. But they're, they're cool if you can get them. Sometimes you'll see what's called an over fender, an extension that rivets onto the front. They're kind of ugly, but they're also kind of neat. If you have one, it's cool. If you have a fender that's got holes drilled in it, but nothing there, it probably had an over fender. If it's got two holes here, but nothing, it probably had a, a fender brace, which mounted here and went to the top triple, I'm sorry, the lower triple, and that's that gave extra support. They offered an ATC cover for these, but you usually don't see them anywhere. Last thing you wanna make sure you ask for are for extra parts, goodies, memorabilia, any gear that they might have. They might say, oh, I've got an old Honda helmet out in the back. Well, that could be a gold mine. They might think, oh, I've got these old pictures from when I got it. That'd be important for me to keep as the previous owner, but maybe they'll give you some stuff or brochures or whatever they happen to have. Oh, I got that file back in the back room. Let me go get that for you. If that was too fast for you, I did a long format version of all that. So check my other videos and you'll be sure to find that. A lot more detail. And if you want comparisons, what's the difference between the 85 and 86? A video just dedicated to that. Find that video on my channel too. Thank you very much. And that completes the ATC 350X Buyer's Guide, the Dirty Dozen, as I think I'm gonna call them. I'm gonna do this for every other machine, so make sure to like and subscribe in case you wanna see what else is important when you're buying a particular Honda ATC model. That's it from this old track. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.